I'm Steve Maxwell, Tools and Techniques Instructor with Ontario Home Builder Magazine, and I want to show you a way that you can use wood grain to improve the value of the home projects that you build so they sell better and bring in more profits. The secret to making the most of wood is finishing and finishing that not only looks good, but it's also easy to prepare. I've got some samples here of water-based urethane finish that I want to show you. As you can see, it comes in a whole bunch of different colors. You needn't use these non-traditional colors. The regular brown or, or even unstained and clearly sealed is an option. But whatever you choose, there are some techniques you have to put into practice if you want that wood to look great. Let's get started right now with the first part of the process, which is sanding. To show you exactly how to apply this kind of finish, I'm going to use this piece of pine board. It's top grade wood, and it's as smooth as you can expect wood to be coming from the lumber yard, but there's still a problem with it. You might be tempted to put a finish directly on this wood, but that would be a huge mistake. You'd never get good results unless you do some sanding first. Take a close look and I'll show you what I mean. On the surface, if you look closely, you'll see the undulation marks left behind by the thickness planer that smoothened this wood. It's those marks that you need to take off and the first tool you use for that is the belt sander. Well, I've just gone over the wood with a 100 grit belt in the belt sander and I've removed all of those mill marks you saw a few seconds ago. The thing is though that the belt sander is still a fairly coarse tool. Even if I had a very fine belt on that sander, it's still likely to leave gouges and scratches. If I didn't hold the sander exactly parallel to the grain, there's going to be some cross grain scratching there. It's very hard to see at this stage, but it comes right out when you put the stain on it. So that's why I have step two, which is using this half sheet vibrating sander. The key to using the half sheet vibrating sander is to use it with light pressure. I've got 120 grit sandpaper on here. And I was moving it back and forth with the grain. The results are considerably smoother than with the belt sander. And to be honest, I could probably go right to stain right now, but just to make sure I've got a flawless surface, there is a third sanding step. Doesn't take very long. It's similar to this one, but it uses a quarter sheet finishing sander, a palm sander, which we'll also use later on for our between coat sanding. But for now, we're just going to use it to refine the wood that last little bit before we start putting some liquid on this piece of pine. The quarter sheet finishing sander is a great tool. It's small and light. In this case, I've used 180 grit sandpaper for that final sanding pass on the wood before we get to the staining and urethaning. When I come to use this for sanding between coats, which I'll explain in a minute or two, I'll switch to 220 grit paper in that case. If you can, vacuum the surface clean. Dust is your enemy at this stage. Now, if you're working on a job site, you could use a shop vac or even a hand broom used vigorously will probably be enough. But sanding wood is an entirely different operation than finishing wood. Finishing has got to be done in a surgically clean situation and that's what we're creating now. At this stage, you have a choice to make. Well, you've probably made the choice before, but you're going to go in one of two directions right now. You can either stain the wood. I've got a range of colors here. There's a traditional brownish color and a red and a blue. Or you can go directly to sealing the finish. You'll need to seal on top of the stain too. Uh, in this case, we're using a water-based urethane. But if you're going to go with staining, then there's a step you need to do before you add the color and that's the application of a pre-stain conditioner. What that does is it evens out 
the absorbency of the wood so you get much more smooth color. Water-based products uh, have very low odor uh, and they dry very quickly. You might be wondering though, if it's water-based, um, isn't the finish water soluble? Uh, these products are water soluble and, and water clean up when they're wet, but as they dry, they undergo a chemical change that makes them insoluble in water. They're actually quite a tough and durable finish. Another advantage is that they don't yellow with age. If you want to preserve a very white finish on the wood, then a water-based urethane on its own is the way to go. Now this is the pre-stained conditioner and I've applied an even coat and we're going to let that dry before we come back and put some stain on. I'm going to let this dry for 15 to 30 minutes before I put the stain on. But before I do, I'm just going to wipe off all the excess. We don't want any of the pre-stain conditioner sealing the surface or forming a film on it. We just want to slake the thirst of that bare wood. Pre-stained conditioner has done its job. It's soaked in. We've wiped it off. It's dried a little bit. If you detect any roughness at all, go over it with a piece of 240 grit sandpaper in your hand and that'll remove any of the grain that was raised as it soaked up the water-based conditioner. Before you get started with the stain, give it a good stir. There's pigments that you need to churn up from the bottom. When the color of the stain becomes consistent, then you know you've got it completely mixed. Now comes the fun part, putting on some stain. You want to put it on fairly, fairly thick. Um, you're going to wipe it off again, just like the, we did with the conditioner. When it goes on, it looks just like paint, but that's not what stain's all about. When we wipe it, we're going to reveal some of the wood grain underneath, and that's what makes this combination look so good. The Minwax water-based stains that I prefer come in lots of non-traditional colors like you see here, as well as a whole bunch of shades of brown if you want to stick with something more conventional. This of course is water-based stain that we've just put on and it dries fairly quickly so you don't want to let the stain sit on the wood for too long before you wipe it off, revealing that all-important wood grain underneath. And you do want to remove everything from the surface. It's only the liquid that's soaked in below the surface that you want to remain. We've got the stain on the wood and it's got to be allowed to dry completely before the next step. Now one note of caution, this doesn't really look all that impressive yet, even though it's a really good staining job. The reason is because it doesn't have the depth of color that the urethane brings out. What you need to do next is to coat with one coat of urethane and let it dry. Then give it another coat of urethane, that's the second one, and when it's completely dry, lightly sand the surface with 220 grit sandpaper, either in the quarter sheet palm sander I showed you before, or by hand in any intricate areas. Give it a third coat, but don't sand after that last coat. What you're probably going to find at that stage is that the urethane looks something like this sample. This is pretty typical, especially when you're using water-based urethanes. Uh, as you can see, there are some bumps, uh, little specks of dust have fallen on the surface and hardened there. Because water-based urethane dries so quickly, uh, there's likely to be brush marks. If there were any bubbles in the liquid as you put it on, they might harden in place too. It looks pretty ugly. Um, what you need to do to fix this is something that I've never seen anyone else do before with water-based urethanes, but it works really well. And that's using a random orbit sander with a 3M rubbing pad to refine that surface and bring it up to a beautiful, shiny, silky gloss like you see here on this sample. 